So I wanted to introduce this video while I'm out doing my favorite thing in the whole world, hiking. And uh, so you can cut it off uh, if you're not interested in history. Because what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reading from my book when I get home and uh, to about the uh, Battle of Stalingrad and uh, what's about to take place in uh, Ukraine. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, the globalists uh, and of course Biden have sent even more military hardware to Ukraine. And this is all while uh, people starve, uh, can't heat their homes, can't afford the price of gas. But yet we can send billions upon billions upon billions of dollars that Congress hasn't approved to Ukraine along with just tons and tons and tons of military equipment. But um, but uh, you know, Democrats are all for it, so what can you say? Uh, anyway, uh, and of course, you know, where's Congress and all this? Where are the neo well, of course, the neocons. You got the neocon Republicans. Okay, well, rhinos, uh, what we call them, Republicans in name only, they're Democrats. Uh, all voting, all lockstep, but let's, uh, let's fight the proxy war in Ukraine, yay, 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 uh, while Americans uh, suffer, or the whole world suffers, really, all the Western nations. But anyway, so um, I'm just going to set the backdrop for the, this, uh, this reading from my book. Um, back in, you know, in the, I guess it was, I can't remember what year it was, probably in my book, but when the German 6th Army rolled out of uh, Germany, I'm sure it was quite a sight to behold. Because as far as I know, I think that was the largest uh, military force, well, it was at that time on the planet, for sure, uh, but probably in the history of the world. And uh, I imagine it just, the columns went for miles and miles of just tanks and, and you know, personnel carriers and Dusenhafs or whatever they call them in Germany. I mean, armored equipment. I mean, it was just a sight to behold. And nobody on earth thought that the Russians stood a chance against the German 6th Army. And it was. It was devastating once they got into to, to Russia because the uh, those Panzer tanks just made cannon fodder of the T-72s. And, uh, and it just looked like Germany was going to roll right through Russia and uh, and basically take all of Russia. Of course, you know the purpose of that invasion, luckily, was to well, it was was to get to the oil fields because the Germans needed oil to operate their machinery. And uh, but luckily, you know, dictators hate dictators. And uh, Hitler had a hard on for Stalin, and Stalin, uh, you know, so he he rerouted the uh, Sixth Army to Stalingrad. And that's all I'm going to say. The next uh, clip will be me reading from my book about the Battle of Stalingrad. And where is, why is this relevant to today? Well, I'm going to demonstrate why you don't want to fight the Russians in the wintertime. And, uh, and I've already set this up in the previous video that uh, once the ground freezes in Ukraine, 300,000 Russian troops are going to storm across that frozen ground and just, well, wreak havoc. And uh, yeah, okay, we're going to have uh, NATO forces there, probably Polish. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be American special forces there. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be a huge battle uh, if if things pan out the way it's looking right now, because uh, they want to fight that proxy war with Russia. What the hell do we got to do with Ukraine anyway, right? I don't understand it. And uh, and I I would have thought to declare war on Russia that we would have needed a vote by Congress. But who am I? So let's, uh, let's get into the reading. Peace out. So this is probably the last uh, copy of my book that's in existence, uh, published back in 2016. Uh, talked about the internet is infected. Uh, Edward Snowden's revelations delayed the publishing of this book by, well, almost three, well, it took me five years to write the book. But I did want to get into... Um, the second chapter of the book, which was Hardening Your Wired and Wireless Network. And you might think, well, what does the Battle of Stalingrad have to do <laughs> with it? But I wanted to get some historical uh, references in the book uh, to, to, you know, demonstrate how important it is to um, layer your security uh, as far as your wired and your wireless network went. But anyway, let's just read this because it's very relevant to what's taking place uh, today in Ukraine, um, Russia hit back pretty hard uh, um, again uh, with even more missiles. Uh, oh, oh! by the way, they're running out. They're running out of missiles. Uh, that's two days of them launching missiles all over Ukraine. 
So let's just read about this because this uh, this took me a while to do all the research on this. And uh, I know doing a reading from the book is boring, but um, anyway, it's it's actually new to me. I haven't read <laughs> I haven't read my own book in, in in years myself. So let's just it's it's pretty brief. Let's just do it. Probably the greatest example in human history of not having a secure home base of operations comes from the Battle of Stalingrad in World War II. The Germans rapidly advanced deep into Soviet territory before the Soviet forces counterattacked in December 1941 and stopped the German drive towards their capital. Hitler insisted to his generals that there would be no need for winter gear. Surely the 6th Army would take Moscow before winter set in. Not only did the army not make it to Moscow in time, but Hitler's generals were forced to stop the invasion due to the cold, which allowed the Soviet army to regroup and resupply itself. This was my point in the previous video that the Russians operate very well in winter conditions. Um, they're a hard, hardy people, and, uh, you know, I tell you, I wouldn't want to be facing the Russians in, in a Russian winter. But that's about what the Ukrainians are about to experience uh, as soon as November, December, and the grounds freeze over. 300,000 mad Russians storming across into um, Ukraine. We'll see how long that war goes on. Uh, oh, and oh, oh, we're only out, what, $100 billion uh, of your taxpayer money? Um, I hope you're okay with that. I'm glad Tulsi came out. So anyway, the Germans advanced without ensuring their supply lines were manageable and were tired and ill-equipped for winter warfare. The Germans waited till, till spring when the winter weather would no longer impede their mobility. Rather than perform a predictable advance on the Soviet capital, the Germans turned and moved on Stalingrad at Hitler's direction. Stalingrad was a huge industrial center for the Red Army, so this shift in tactics was an understandable and intelligent decision. Had Stalingrad fallen, it would have severely weakened the Soviets. Maybe evil attracts evil or dictators hate other dictators, but Hitler's inflated ego was obsessed with defeating Stalin and taking the Stalingrad city, which was named after him. After all, against all sound advice, Hitler would not allow the 6th Army to withdraw and ordered them to continue to fight and take the city at any cost. The rubble in the city impeded the Germans' use of their advanced mobility technology, and there was the close urban warfare which benefited the Soviets immensely. Hitler remained so focused on the city that he denied all requests made by the German, Italian, Hungarian, and Romanian armies to withdraw and refocus their assets as they struggled to protect the 6th Army's flanks. As a result, the Soviets were able to devise a strategy to exploit the known weak flanks and they surrounded the Germans. Hitler was delusional in believing that his Luf Luftwaffe air force could keep the massive army supplied under wartime conditions. To understand the scope of this decision, the 6th Army was the largest unit of tanks, infantry, engineers, artillery, and ground attack aircraft that has ever existed in the history of our world. Properly commanded, that military force should have been unstoppable by, by any force on Earth. History now views the United States as a diminishing superpower, but at that time in history, the Germans' Sixth Army's technology far advanced anything the world had ever seen. Had Hitler unleashed it on Europe, the outcome of the war would have been far different. Britain may have fallen, which would have altered the outcome of World War II. The Germans were not able to ensure their supply lines due to the bad weather and relentless Soviet attacks in close quarters on their immobile forces. German commanders knew that they needed to set, set up and keep a secure re rear base of operations to with, and withdraw. They repeatedly asked commanders for permission to withdraw, but luckily Hitler rejected their requests. The Western world might not exist had Hitler listened to his general's requests. Let us hope our military leaders and NCOs in the field never succumb to this type of thinking and do the right thing in the face of wrong political decisions, which is where we are today. <clears throat> Let's just continue. Hitler's refusal to give up on Stalingrad resulted in a huge toll in German casualties. 
At the end of the campaign, 91,000 starving, exhausted, and ill Germans in the 6th Army surrendered to the Red Army in early March of 1943. Of the 91,000, only 6,000 survived captivity and returned home. Atrocities on both sides were horrendous throughout these battles and throughout the entire war. In addition, the eventual uh, decimation of the 6th Army allowed time for the Allies to start coordinating their invasion of France, which happened much later in the war during June of 1944. So... Does history repeat itself or what? You know, we're, we're in this quagmire in Ukraine. For whatever reason, I have no idea. It doesn't make sense. How is our national interest served by being in Ukraine? Tulsi Gabbard said it best. Uh, you know, the warmongers are going to have their way. I mean, the Democrats are destroying this country. They're the warmongers. Do you understand that? It, well, and of course, the, the rhino Republicans, they're going along with it, too. Uh, hell, even AOC got called out for voting for the war in Ukraine and, and sending billions and billions and billions of taxpayer money into a war, a proxy war against Russia that we're going to lose. That's it. Just wanted to do a reading about the stuff. Battle of Stalingrad. I hope you found it educational. History repeats itself when you have stupidity in the command of your military forces. Peace out. Stay free. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, the free, the free state of Republican Florida.